You're watching Good Day Siouxland with Mallory Smith, Nick Wilson, and meteorologist Victor Perez. From KCAU 9 News, this is Good Day Siouxland. Good morning. It is 645 on this Tuesday morning. I'm Mallory Smith. I'm Victor Perez. Well, it is a Tuesday morning and Nick does have the morning off. He's going to be off all week vacationing in probably a much nicer part of the area right now because I know we're seeing some cloud coverage here. I mean, it's all right, you know, quiet, you know, a little bit of a maybe patter of rain that you saw earlier. Help you to lull yourself into sleep if you woke up a little early. We'll see that the Wayne, Nebraska camera shows that there's a couple of showers and storms outside of the forecast area. And we've been a little bit drier since the morning hours. We did see some showers and sprinkles earlier. We still see some by Norfolk, but we'll see that most of us are well, seeing winds under 10 miles per hour, unless you're by Orange City and Bloomfield, both of them a little over 10 but the rest of us pretty quiet. We'll see here on the radar showing those showers and storms making their way across the region, dissipating earlier in the morning as we get this second batch passing through. Now they have reported a hail a quarter of an inch in diameter here and there, but it's looking like the severe storms have stayed outside of the forecast area and they're looking to stay that way more and more as and the models show it uh, shifted a little bit further east. But we'll keep an eye on them either way as there is severe potential through the morning hours. Back to you, Mallory. Yeah, definitely, Victor. All right, thanks. Well, Iowans can once again access legal abortion care until 20 weeks of pregnancy, just days after new restrictions first took effect. It comes as a Polk County judge temporarily blocked the new law, which banned most abortions after roughly six weeks of pregnancy, until legal challenges play out in court. The ruling also specified that while the law is paused, the State Board of Medicine should proceed with creating rules for enforcement, as the law specifies. That way, health care providers would have clear guidance if the law takes effect again in the future. The president and CEO of Planned Parenthood North Central States says in the meantime, yesterday's ruling allows clinics to return to business as usual. This temporary injunction allows us to once again support our patients and their health care needs. Planned Parenthood remains committed to providing abortion care in Iowa. Our abortion patient navigators will continue to connect patients in Iowa with the resources that they need to get to their appointments wherever they are. And that return to business as usual seems to have been front of mind for Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds in a statement responding to the injunction. It reads in part, quote, in their own words, the abortion industry stressed the need for a temporary injunction so they could continue with 200 scheduled abortions in the next two weeks. While life was protected for a few days, now even more innocent babies will be lost, end quote. And Governor Reynolds added that she expects the Iowa Supreme Court will eventually rule in favor of the new law. In the meantime, abortion rights supporters also responded to the injunction. In a statement, the legal director for the ACLU of Iowa said in part, quote, This order is essential to protecting the bodily autonomy, rights and freedom of Iowans, as well as their health and safety, while this unconstitutional and dangerous abortion ban is litigated. We know Iowans stand with us in wanting to protect abortion rights and keep politicians out of doctor-patient decision-making, end quote. Well, elsewhere, railroad company Union Pacific is renewing a push for one-person train crews. So later this summer, the Omaha-based railroad will test out the idea of having a conductor in a truck respond to problems on trains in Nebraska and Colorado. The railroad will continue using two-member crews on trains during the test. Rail unions have long opposed cutting train crews down to one person because of safety concerns, but the conductor's union agreed to let Union Pacific run out the test. Union Pacific has been a leading proponent in the industry's push to go down to one-person train crews. And in lighter news, after another drawing with no jackpot winner, the Powerball top prize has once again crossed the billion-dollar mark. That means the new jackpot for Wednesday's drawing will be the third highest in U.S. history. Workers at Lotto Ticket retailers say as the prize pool grows, so does the number of people looking to buy a ticket. Lottery officials add playing the lottery is also an opportunity to give back, as revenues from lottery tickets go to the state. In South Dakota, lottery sales have sent more than $3.4 billion back to the state. However, officials emphasize it only takes one ticket to win, so be sure to play responsibly. 
All right, well, switching gears now, KCNI News is giving some lucky viewers the chance to see Iowa's big racing weekend in person. We're giving six winners two tickets to the Indy Race and Concert on either July 22nd or 23rd. The musical lineup for Saturday is Carrie Underwood and Kenny Chesney, while on Sunday, the Zach Brown Band and Ed Sheeran will take the stage. And the winners will be decided tomorrow, so you need to enter soon if you want to win a chance. Or if you want a chance to win, you can do that by going to SueLandProud.com, clicking on the contest tab. Definitely be sure to enter. Mm -hmm. All right, well, now it's time to meet today's stray of the day. Every day we share a pet picked up by Sioux City Animal Adoption and Rescue, who is waiting to go home. And today we are sharing Diesel, a three to four year old male Rottweiler that weighs about 85 pounds, a little bit of a bigger guy. He was originally adopted from the rescue, but had to be returned. The rescue says he's a very loyal dog who knows some basic commands. He just doesn't get along well with cats or little kids. Diesel is available for adoption now. And if you lost your pet or if you're looking to adopt or if you'd like to sponsor a pet for adoption, you can visit the rescue's website. It's at SiouxCityAnimalRescue.com. I mean, what more could you want in a little guy? He's very loyal. Mm -hmm. I mean, most dogs are. Guy's best friend, but still, <laughs> he's very loyal, a uh, sweet guy. I don't know why he had to be returned, but I'm sure it wasn't his fault. Yeah, so sometimes in just not the right fit. Exactly. You know, maybe they had a little cat. Exactly. It doesn't work out. I know. If I brought him to my house, he probably wouldn't be too happy. But if I brought him over today, I'd probably want to do it more so towards the later hours because it's going to be maybe clearing up then. Or I mean, we should be pretty good here in Sioux City and for okay. much of eastern and northern Siouxland. We've seen those showers concentrated to our west where the clouds have been thicker, keeping it a little bit warmer. You can see 63 in Norfolk and 62 in Wayne, but we'll see that conditions across the area are primarily close to 50 degrees, or excuse me, 60. We'll see 59 in Sioux City, 58 in uh, Cherokee, and 57 in Sheldon. Looping radar here showing a couple of showers passing through the area, primarily out in northeastern Nebraska, but they're looking pretty light with the severe storms outside of the viewing area, as we'll see the storm cast showing that uh, showers are favored to the west, and then uh, looking like clearer conditions, like Mallory was talking about, that remain clear for the start of the day tomorrow. We'll see building clouds afterwards, though, so we're keeping on some more showers later on and we'll have temperatures today that are going to be rising up into the upper 70s morning showers but a clear afternoon as we see that those winds will still remain from the southeast and southeastern breezes are going to continue through the overnight into tomorrow as we see temperatures rising up into the mid 80s looking at some lower 80s for thursday and friday but the weekend really shows those temperatures cranking it up a notch as we look at a warmer next week yeah, definitely a bit of a warmer one. All right, thanks, Victor. Well, now let's turn to sports where state tournaments are underway for Iowa High School baseball and softball with some Siouxland teams still in the running. No Saco has those details in your morning sports wrap. Good morning, Siouxland. The most exciting time of the summer is here as the Iowa baseball and softball state tournaments are off and running. Kingsley Pearson enters as the lone top seed among our Siouxland contenders, opening up their quest for the title for South Winnesheek in the Class 1A quarterfinals yesterday. Once the Panthers in their third state trip in four years, Warriors looking to send them home. Bottom one KP at the corners with two outs for Bo Bupke. There goes the pass ball. Bupke waving at Emerson Pratt who cruises in from 90 feet. Panther strike first, one zip. Moments later, Tyler Orzakowski trying to extend the inning. Chopper to short and the fielder can handle it. Error brings in Boston Deuce Kit. Two Warrior miscues, 2-0 KP lead. Still in the first, a Bo Goodwin RBI makes it 3-0. Easton Nissen at the dish. Under the legs of Short, another comes home. Five KP runs off three hits and three airs in the first. Same score in the fourth. Evan Newman goes five strong innings. This was the only earned run. Panthers go to second for one on the fielder's choice. Lucas Weiss gets the Warriors on the board 5-1. Then Goodwin delivers in the bottom of five. RBI single dropped. Score and deuce kit as the Panthers power into their third semifinal in four years. 6-1 the final. Some more 1A action from Carroll. Two seed reps in St. Mary's and its eight straight state trip. Seven seed St. A Ainsgar the challenger. Bottom six, Hawks down one zip, but look at Austin Klein with a swinging bunt. Pretty worth charging in from third. He's safe. We're all tied at once. Moments later, it's Brendan Fish now. He's opting for the squeeze bunt. It works to perfection. No throw. Landon Walshman crosses from 90 feet just like that. RSM in front 2-1. And how about some insurance for the Hawks? Jackson Bunker's a high fly to left. That's going to do the trick. Sack fly brings home Ryan Woolman 
big run, 3-1 RSM. Top seven, Saints with the tying run at the plate, one hopper to short, and it hits the runner. That's interference, and that's going to be the game as RSM survives and advances back into the semis, 3-1. And over in Fort Dodge, Esterville Lincoln Central and Davis County scoring off in the Class 3A quarterfinals. Madeline Barker of D.C. was dealing to begin this game, racking up strikeouts left and right. Mustang offense trying to give her some run support. Bottom two, runner on third. Check out the bunt from Caitlin Olinger. That's going to score the first run of the game. But ELC would play some small ball with some bunts of their own. And there's nothing small about this wing from Tatum Dunlavy. A monster shot soon after to deep left field. That's going to give ELC the 3-1 lead. Tatum's uncle, as a matter of fact, the head coach for Davis County. No Christmas present from Zach this year. Mustangs coming back to tie the game, but ELC explodes for eight runs from there. ELC goes on to advance. That should check it, sports. Have a great day, Sue Land. And now let's take a look at this morning's top stories. It's what you need to know before you go. An arraignment is scheduled in Madison County, Nebraska court for today at 1 p.m. for 32-year-old Jeffrey Stewart of Harlington, Texas. He's accused of misusing more than $740,000 from North Fork Area Transit. It's a nonprofit agency that provides transportation services to North Fork and the surrounding area. Stewart had been the general manager of the nonprofit until his suspension in December of last year. He had allegedly been using a company credit card for personal purchases. He was booked into the Madison County Jail over the weekend after he turned himself into the U.S. Border Patrol in Texas last week. A Texas judge ordered his extradition to Nebraska last Friday. And elsewhere in Siouxland, Sioux City police are investigating two different stabbings that occurred within 24 hours. Yesterday evening, both or police responded to a stabbing on the 1400 block of McDonald Street. Authorities believe a fight between a man and a woman may have led to the incident. The woman was transported to a local hospital with non-life-threatening wounds. While the man is in custody, police custody, after being taken to a hospital by authorities. Police say charges are pending against the male suspect. The incident came less than a day after separate stabbings on 26th Street. The increase in stabbings, um, it's an easy weapon of choice for suspects. Um, most people have knives on them. Um, on their persons or in their homes, so it's an easy weapon to access. Um, I don't believe there's any danger to the public, though. In the 26th Street incident, one person was left dead and another critically injured. Early yesterday morning, officers found a man with multiple stab wounds outside of a house. When police searched the home, they located a second man who had several gunshot wounds. Both men were taken to a local hospital. The man with the gunshot wounds died from his injuries. The investigation into that incident is ongoing. And meanwhile, the city of Sioux City is working to secure funding from the state of Iowa to help build a mountain bike trail. So at last night's meeting, the Sioux City City Council approved a grant application totaling $150,000 for improvements at Cone Park and Sertoma Park. The money is being made available by the Iowa Department of Transportation and a state recreational trails program fund. The city will pledge a 25% minimum local match contribution and is committing to adequately maintaining the trail for at least 20 years. The project includes the construction of 10.5 miles of natural trails and a single track trail network to offer different challenge levels for cyclists. We're going to be really having a lot of people coming into Sioux City because of that trail. Because I understand that they're far and few between with Sioux City. And a lot of people are traveling more miles, more hours to get to a trail such as what we will have here in Sioux City. In the meantime, locker room improvements at the IVP Ice Center also remain on track. Council members approved a contract and performance bond with h &R Construction totaling more than $1.6 million. The Ice Center project is expected to be complete next June. As for that bike trail, though, those temperatures this week are looking pretty good to get out on a bike trail. Yeah, especially with Rag Bike Group coming up. I we'll know. see that the weekend's going to be even a little bit warmer, though. Temperatures today rising up into the upper 70s, pretty decent. A little bit on the cooler end for summertime with those showers that we had in the morning. As we'll see some more showers and storms possible through tomorrow as well. At least this time focused in the afternoon hours, though. We'll see temperatures in the low to mid 80s through the rest of this week. Uh, rising up on Saturday with Rag Bike coming up. 
up. And then a peak in as we look at some low 90s forecasted through the majority of next week with some clearer conditions that are favored as well. So we're going to see a lot more sunshine coming up soon, Mallory. And we're going to have a lot more people in down too as well. I was just thinking about that with Rag Ride coming up. There's a few more events coming up this weekend as well. But at least we're going to have some uh, or less rain chances. Yeah, so it'll be good to be out. Exactly, yeah. All right, well, thanks so much for watching and have a great rest of your morning.